The Cable Guy is our ongoing look at some of the more outspoken cable TV personalities. Susan Spencer of 48 Hours is just back from a visit with a man who is never down for the count. You, sir, have become the president who cried wolf. If you firmly believe reporters never should share their personal views... Mr. Bush, the question is no longer what are you thinking, but rather are you thinking at all? Keith Olbermann is definitely not the newsman for you. I remember seeing your first commentary, and my reaction was, you know, watch it now, because you're not going to see it tomorrow. <laughs> funny, funny, funny thing happens sometimes. The wages of sin are sometimes not what you expect, isn't it? Well, this guy's gone. In his case, the wage of sin for being outspoken, opinionated, and irreverent is Countdown, a one hour roller coaster ride of a newscast every weeknight on MSNBC. Which of these stories will you be talking about tomorrow? It's not just politics. Olbermann counts down the day's top stories from soup to nuts. Booga Columbia, hello. It's a chicken born with duck feet. The whole wacky world as he sees it. You sick freaks. I think most people would be surprised that you take the subway to work. His background hardly explains the wackiness. He grew up in the New York City suburbs, his dad an architect, his mom a school teacher. But he did pick up their take on politics. There wasn't any particular political conversation going on. There was a kind of um, broad-based assumption that they were all idiots. Really? That was kind of passed on. That, I was going to yeah. say, that was something that you inherited. Yeah, I mean, guess what? They were right. He picked up his mother's take on his other passion, baseball. My father detested sports. Really? Had no interest in it whatsoever. Would go to uh, Yankee games with my mother and I. We were the baseball fans. But it was his father who accidentally steered him down his current path. Dad said, well, you know, you can listen to the games on the radio. You can't watch them on TV late at night past your bedtime. But you can listen to them on the radio, but only if the, if the lights are off and the room's dark. It's a high pop-up. Who's going to get it? Here comes Billy Martin digging hard, and he makes the catch at the last second. You know, I became a, a fan of the, of the announcers as much as of the players. So did you decide early on that you wanted to go into broadcasting? Pretty much right then. In game one, the game of his life, Mark West led Phoenix to an upset of the Lakers, but in game two, the sun sank slowly, as did West. In 1992, after stints in L.A. and Boston, Olbermann made it to sports nirvana, ESPN. I'm Keith Olbermann, he's Dan Patrick, but you knew that already. And Sports Center, which was heaven, but there were drawbacks. One of them being, when are we going to talk about something besides sports? He left ESPN in 1997, bounced between news and sports until 9-11. And I was sound asleep, missed the whole thing, picked up the phone, voicemail message from a, from a friend of mine from out of town, are you okay after what happened? What, what happened? Then I put the computer on and I knew what happened. A friend who ran a radio station in Los Angeles asked him to go on the air. KFWE's Keith Oberman has a live update from New York City. Body parts found on the 14th floor of the world. And for 40 days, I was the street reporter. Best kind of therapy that you could get. That therapy also won him awards and swung the career pendulum back to news, or to his version of it, Countdown. 16 words from the president that have now been defended, debunked, and debated. For one you need to make a newscast that looks like life. Very serious, very angry, very stupid, very silly, uh, very snarky, um, very much about pop culture. Now to other fictional characters in our nightly roundup of celebrities. It can be exhausting. I mean... Life or the newscast? Your newscast. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> the Libby trial. His FBI interviewer says... Along with the news, this nightly assault on the senses includes his daily pick of the worst person in the world. Frequently his arch enemy, conservative commentator... Bill O'Reilly. Today's worst person in the world. And on that note... Let's play oddball. There's always oddball, the day's catch of weird video. And we'll start in Changdi, China, with a special treat for all the folks. It's a travel-themed Czechoslovakian stuntman show. Woohoo!
Then whipsawing to the serious, he ends each show with a reminder of the unpopular war in Iraq. That's countdown for this, the 1,401st day since the declaration of mission accomplished in Iraq. And borrows the somber sign-off of his hero, Edward R. Murrow. From New York, I'm Keith Olbermann. Good night and good luck. Then seems to make fun of the whole exercise. <laughs> you know, it just, it just softens the idea that this is a, uh, it's a newscast. Thank you. But not that you don't want people to take some of it quite seriously. Yeah, but only, only in the appropriate degree. Yeah. Countdown was flying beneath the ratings radar for several years, until last August, when a speech by then Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld sent Olbermann into a fury. He said, essentially, that anyone who was critical of the war on terror, or the war in Iraq, or indeed of the administration's policies, was equivalent to those who appeased Hitler. I'm not a big fan of being called a Nazi appeaser, or even a parallel to a Nazi appeaser. I took that personally. He was mad as hell and not going to take it anymore, he says, and he didn't. He wrote what became the first of his special comments. The man who sees absolutes where all other men see nuances and shades of meaning is either a prophet or a quack. Donald H. Rumsfeld is not a prophet. For liberals, desperate for a white-hot star to answer Cable's popular conservatives, this was a gift. The President of the United States, unbowed, undeterred, and unconnected to reality, has continued his extraordinary trek through our country, rooting out the enemies of freedom, the Democrats. A gift as well to MSNBC. Countdown's viewership is up 85% in the past year. To those who cry foul, Oberman insists he's just saying what a lot of people really think. If a, if a Democrat did those things, I would be out there just as ferociously. I don't think the Democrats are automatically right. I have many personal conservative views. I have many personal liberal views. I'm concerned about the freedoms that we say that we are protecting. Five of the sweetest words in the English language have been spoken around the country today and tonight. Pitchers and catchers report tomorrow. Not that such weighty concerns ever are allowed to crowd out sports. Away from the cameras, baseball still rules. This is like the first, one of the first sets of actual biographies. The kid who began collecting baseball cards at four is one of the country's leading authorities and a consultant to the Topps Baseball Card Company. He's got cards even they've never seen before. These are just your typical 1871 baseball cards. But Countdown's growing popularity makes it the priority today, and Olbermann shows no sign of pulling his punches. Let me just, I'll just toss out a name or two, and you just give me what the first thing this is that ends, pops into your head. Here's the end of my career once again. <laughs> the 33rd consecutive end of my career. Go oh, ahead, Sue. Oh, Alberto Gonzalez. Um, I'd really like to see his diploma. Laura Bush. Very nice lady. In a knife fight, I think she'd get me. I think she'd kill me. I think she'd be re she's surprisingly capable. Paris Hilton. Uh, if she didn't exist, we'd probably make up a character who was like her. Hillary Clinton. I, I think she went to, to improved Hillary Clinton boot camp in the first <laughs> six weeks of this year. I think she's trying real hard. Dick Cheney. Boy, he scares the living crap out of me. Which, of course, may be how many people feel about Keith Olbermann. Good night and good luck.